think growing up, I felt like I always had to fight for my right to do what the guys were doing. So it's as really as far as I can remember, I was always fighting to prove myself. So the fight to become a Marine was actually, I was a recruiter's dream. I walked into the office and I said, sign me up, I wanna be a Marine. And they said, okay, we'll sit down, what do you wanna do? I very confidently said, well, I wanna be Force Recon. And when they realized that I was serious, they, they stopped laughing and they sat me down and they had to explain to me that at that time, females weren't allowed in that position. So I was so mad that I stormed out and left. So I went to college. During that first semester of college, I did turn 18. I ended up speaking with the recruiters and finding out the most combative position a female could have. And they told me about this illustrious crew chief that they didn't have a spot for, but if I fought my way through, I could still get this spot and have this job. I went to boot camp knowing I needed to graduate as the honor graduate. And if I didn't, I was they were going to assign me any job. And we started on our own compiling scores and whatnot, and it became evident that I would be the honor graduate. The company commander approached me during um, graduation practice and said, well, we hear you want to be a crew chief, but there's no spots on the East Coast, so go to your next school and if you become the honor graduate at your next school, then you'll get it. So I went to Marine Combat Training, and now I was up against not only females, I was up against men. And it came down to myself and another Marine, and we were neck and neck, and it came down to a gun test, and I scored higher. So I graduated honor graduate, and the Master Gunnery Sergeant there told me that I could have that job. Now I finally have earned that title. I'm a crew chief now. I'm on Huey's and I hit the fleet. We were in Iraq on Alta Qadam. I kept trying to prove myself I can do this because yes, I had earned being a crew chief, but I only had gold wings. So now I wanted to earn my combat wings. And I remember we had finally earned our combat wings, so we, we were pinned in Iraq. My next deployment was to Afghanistan. Afghanistan was a very different fight than Iraq. Not everyone came back from this one. Family, friends, and community members will gather to honor a local Marine killed in Afghanistan. Captain Kyle Van de Giesen, the 29-year-old died when his chopper crashed in Afghanistan last week. The two men in the Cobra died, and then two of the four men in the Huey died. These guys, right here. Captain Seth Mitchell, Captain Kyle Van de Giesen, Captain Eric Jones, and Corporal Greg Flurry. I was injured a little bit uh, while we were in Afghanistan. And I had to come back and have some surgeries and, and then I went for my flight physical. I sat down with our flight surgeon and through speaking with her, I realized that I was never gonna fly again. And in that instant, I knew my whole life had changed. My plans, my dreams, everything was ripped out from under me. Yeah, I had to get out. There's always something missing. The brotherhood isn't there anymore. That feeling of service is not something that can be matched. There's that emptiness, that fear of being alone until it was, until you can't fight anymore. The pain's the failure. The pain is the voices of the Marines that were on the ground that I couldn't save. The pain is the Marines 
that didn't have the opportunity to come back alive. The pains of failure of not being a Marine anymore. I'm no longer earning my place here in this country. So what's my purpose? And if you don't have a purpose, why exist? There's nothing I love more than leading Marines. You have to be strong. I am strong. Yes, I've been through struggles in my life and I've proven others wrong, but nothing makes you feel weaker than being ashamed of yourself. When you're in pain for so long and you've tried everything you can possibly try, everything you can think of to stop the pain and nothing works, you find yourself thinking that there's no other way to stop it but to end it. I dealt with this for about two to three years until it came to a head. I was driving back from Miss Libby's house. Miss Libby was my ex's mother. I was driving back from her house. I was visiting her husband, Mr. Chet. And I knew when I hugged him goodbye, I knew what I was coming home to do. And I was texting one of my girlfriends. And I don't know what I said to her. I know I definitely didn't tell her what I was going to do, but she knew. Something the way I said she knew. I was in this house. So I, I wrote a letter to my family. I loaded my weapon. And I didn't know this at the time. I found this out actually just recently. My girlfriend wasn't in town. She didn't know anyone to come here. She, the only person she knew was my neighbor. She called my neighbor. My neighbor was out of town. My neighbor called his roommate who happened to be home. And as I'm standing at the counter writing the letter, prepared to walk upstairs and pull the trigger, Shannon knocks on the door. She's yelling at me, I know you're in there. She's trying to be funny, not letting me know that she knows there's a problem. I didn't answer the door, but it stopped me in my tracks. went to sleep and then Shan, she came back the next morning and came upstairs and laid in bed with me and cried with me. The next day I gave my weapon to someone. My brother got involved, my brother found out. He came over, he had people come over. My church got involved and I haven't struggled with suicide since. If it wasn't for the network of friends and family that I have, those that were there for me, people I could openly talk to. So being able to talk to someone without them judging you starts the path to healing. Why talk about it? Because not everyone has a brother to take their weapon away. Not everyone has a neighbor to knock on their door. So you have to talk about it. You can't ignore something because we're afraid of it. I've lost Marines to suicide. If one person sees this video, if just one person will reach out to someone for help, if one person will see something and it saves their life, it's worth it.